feel the Marvel love. That's right. Kevin Feige's courting you hard uh, because he knows that you're, you're a little bit uh, unhappy in the current relationship. <laughs> yes, happy Valentine's Day. As, uh, as Marvel said to you, uh, I'm not going to wear my glasses for the whole stream, but I wanted you to see them uh, because uh, they re unfortunately reflect the light. But uh, happy Valentine's Day. We're going to have a great time. I was like, what are we going to talk about today on the stream? There you go. Now, Kevin Feige, that guy, he never loved a Warner, uh, he never, um, he just absolutely loves Warner Brothers ideas. Because as you might recall, uh, last year on Valentine's Day, Joker 2 uh, put out a little, a little something. Uh, so much so, in fact, that was so memorable that a number of people were hoping that it would be uh, something else today. Uh, but instead, Warner Brothers went with a Godzilla X Kong uh, trailer. Oh, that's so generous of you, we see. Thank you. Uh, and uh, uh, Marvel went with an hour before, no less. Oh, it was so mean. Uh, with the reveal of the Fantastic Four cast. Uh, very, very interesting. There's so much to discuss here. I'm just, I, I loaded up a ton of graphics. We're going to have a great time. Uh, I do feel bad for Joker 2. I mean, that's the one movie that comes out this year, for Pete's sake. Uh, and uh, uh, Fantastic Four kind of swooped in there. But I do think it's funny that you have this theme of love, you know, the two friendship hearts. And they even released a new graphic today for Deadpool and Wolverine making the heart with their hands. And then Wolverine's claws were extended on his hand. Um, and then, you know, happy Valentine's Day from the Fantastic Four. Uh, by the way, I have a little bit of tea for you. Uh, I had heard that there was maybe going to be like, I think Marvel, what I heard was Marvel was going to be a little bit more proactive uh, and a little bit more aggressive in sharing what they had coming up next. But unfortunately, the Jonathan Major situation kind of put them on defense an unsure footing as to what they were going to do. Hey, Lisa, that's very generous of you. Uh, so that's one of the reasons you haven't been hearing so much from them. Uh, probably also not only because they were on defense, but also, thanks, Malcolm, but also probably because, you know, they're now not totally 100% sure of their plans because they probably, especially after that New York Times expose, they can't really move forward uh, with majors. So that, cr that creates a little bit of a problem for them. I also, another little, little bit of tea, I heard that this story, uh, the Fantastic Four story, as it currently stands, you know, they've been rewriting it a lot, but I've heard that, um, thank you, Tanya, uh, I've heard, I'm not going to acknowledge your questions and comments too much because I want this to be able to play even after the live, okay? So I'm going to cook, and then after, we, you can ask me your comments and questions, but feel free to chat in the, in the um, chat while I'm, while I'm doing my thing. So the other thing that I heard was that the uh, script kind of has two storylines, you know, together. Uh, the comparison I heard was a little bit like Greta Gerwig's Little Women, which ain't a bad comparison. So uh, I'm, I did not hear what the two timelines were, what the two storylines were, uh, you know, one in the past, one in the future. Uh, you know, remember in uh, Little Women, uh, remember, no, it's not a B storyline. Uh, not an A-B storyline, present progressive. That's, you know, two different things happening simultaneously. I'm talking about in Little Women, they had Joe in, in the city, living her dream, and then also flashback to what her life was like beforehand and how she got there. So that's what I'm talking about. So my guess would be that maybe you would have their life back in the 1960s, you know, in this other universe that they're coming from, when everything was happy and wonderful, and then maybe something's either gone wrong or they're crossing over to the MCU. Uh, yeah, Mika, I don't know about The Godfather. That's too big of a time difference because that was different generations. This is the same group of people, but kind of like at different times. But I think this is going to allow them to have the 1960s element and the current element as well. Oh, thanks, Eloy. You know, because I think they want that 1960s thing, but I think they don't want it to go too far, you know? But the 1960s, oh boy, you know, they'll do anything but bring back Scarlet Witch herself. They'll do a spin-off show with Agatha. They'll do another group in the 1960s who are loving each other. And it's like, where's Wanda and Vision? I mean, they were just such a big deal. You know, it's um, the same director, Matt Shackman, uh, who thankfully seems to still be on the project, even though he had to uh, erase his uh, Instagram account the other day for, uh, you know, tweeting out the Pedro Pascal leak. 
But, you know, I feel, I do feel bad for poor Wanda that she's just not anywhere. It's like, Wanda, why? Why not, why not bring back the characters that actually, I, th I think it's weird to think it was the 1960s setting and not Wanda in Vision, who I think a lot of people and fans really have connected with. Uh, but I do like the 1960s. Hold on. You know, uh, I don't, I'm not sure how well the 1960s, that's another good reason to split it. Because while some of us really love the 1960s and 1950s and vintage and retro, some people do not. You know, WandaVision didn't stay in the 1960s. Uh, and so I think it's a good idea to, um, to have a little bit something else that, so you're not totally banking on that. Because there have been 1960s projects that have not done hugely well. Peyton Reed's, uh, you know, uh, Ewan McGregor, Renee Zellweger movie, uh, Mad Men. Tons of awards over the years, but nobody ever watched that thing. Its ratings were always pretty low. So you want to be a little bit careful. Now, I personally think, let me make it a little bigger so we can really look at it. Hold on. I think this is absolutely charming because I love vintage and retro. I think they're phenomenal. I'm a big fan. Every year when I buy Valentine's Day cards for family and friends, I always get the vintage ones. I'm a big fan of vintage and retro. Thanks, Jerome. Uh, and so, especially for holidays, Christmas, Valentine's Day, uh, please retro it up. I just absolutely love that stuff. This, of course, also is a shout out to the original comics, which took it, came out in the 1960s. In fact, 1961. Um, that's right, Brian. Don't worry, darling. We also had a retro feel and also did not do particularly well. Uh, but uh, the Fantastic Four, of course, is the first family of Marvel, one of the first comics, major comics to come out from the publisher. And in fact, they even predate uh, Spider-Man by a year. That robot is Herbie. We'll talk about him um, uh, right now. That's in, I'm looking at my notes here. Yep, that's right. That's Herbie. That's their robot that helps them out. It's a lot like Jarvis. It's a lot like Griot for Shuri, voiced by Trevor Noah. Jarvis, of course, originally voiced by... Um, uh, uh, oh, oh, he plays frickin' Vision, Paul Bettany. And then, of course, uh, Jennifer Connelly, his wife, voiced uh, a version of that in Spider-Man. Uh, so, and, and then they had someone, you know, Friday c came on instead, you know, a reference to his girl Friday. Uh, but so, of course, you have to wonder who's going to voice Herbie. Uh, hard to differentiate the MCU characters, wouldn't you say? Uh, you know, they all have a little robot or AI helping them out. Uh, they're all science bros and gals. But I guess one of the ways you can differentiate them is sweaters. Do you see that they're wearing sweaters in these costumes? That's hilarious to me. It's very 1960s. I don't know who on earth would wear a sweater for any type of physical activity, but sweaters are very complimentary. Uh, I think they're going to look very good on Pedro Pascal and Vanessa Kirby. Uh, also, you can note that their boots are astronaut space boots. They kept the boots, changed everything else out, uh, uh, but I think, I think that's great. I think that's a nice, uh, touch to have the, uh, the, the astronaut boots there. Uh, and then I do think, I would suspect if they've split the script into two separate timelines, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, you know, they change their outfits for one of them. And that would be awesome. They would have two sets of costumes, which I think would be fantastic. Sensation, they didn't have AI in the 1960s, but they also didn't have superheroes that could light themselves on fire and turn invisible. So I think, you know, everything's fair game. You know, uh, Reed is certainly capable of creating AI even in the 1960s. Uh, this is a different universe I, from what I heard. So it's not our 1960s. Uh, it's the 1960s from... Uh, you know, another world where maybe it's the 1960s all the time. Uh, so that, that's, a, that's a big uh, thing. That's, a, that's how they're going to get away with nobody of ever, having ever heard of these Fantastic Four until now. Uh, so let's see here. Now let me bring this back to where it was because i got to coincide it with my pictures. All right, so let's look at some of the other movies. Now let's talk about the casts in comparison. So the very first Fantastic Four movie came out in 2005. Very Fox, very Hollywood. Of course, it gave us Chris Evans before he eventually became Captain America. He played the original Johnny Storm. Uh, so, uh, and Michael Chiklis uh, was Ben Grimm. Uh, so, that, you know, those movies weren't particularly good. I think some people have a nostalgia factor for them. There's a rumor they might show up, although Michael Chiklis just said he's not going to be in Deadpool 3. But maybe he's pulling an Andrew Garfield. You never know these days. Uh, but, you know, it was good enough for them to make a sequel, 
But I think it was it was it was not like the X Men. I would say that both the Fox Daredevil and Fantastic Four movies, some people enjoyed them, but most people were like, when is this going to go back to Marvel? Because this just is you know this was actually 2005 was before Iron Man even came out, so you didn't know how good it could be. Uh, so that was the first Fantastic Four movie. Then of course, 10 years later in 2015, they relaunched it. Fox tried again with the Fantastic Four. Uh, this was very post Nolan. Uh, I actually liked the first act of this, and I also thought they did some interesting stuff with body horror for their transformations. I liked that. Uh, this film had some problems, though. Uh, I'm forgetting the name. It was the guy who played uh, Billy Elliot. He's actually now married to one of the Maras, who, of course, uh, you know, uh, I mean, one of the Roonies, uh, Kate, uh, Rooney Mara and Kate Mara, right? He's married to Kate. Uh, by the way, Joker's actually married to, uh, oh, it's Jamie Bell, thank you. Uh, 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 Joker, uh, a.k.a. Joaquin Phoenix, is actually with uh, Rooney Mara. And the Mara family is incredibly wealthy. They actually, their, their family owns, uh, I believe, the New England Patriots, right? They own a very big football team. Very, very big. And that's right, Kate Mara was Sue Storm. Uh, I think they were friends for a long time before they uh, ended up getting married, but they are now a couple. They're married. Oh, the Steelers. Oh, they own the Steelers. Thanks you, thank you, Dancing Dog 60 uh, and Kay Walton. Uh, Art Rooney, yes, that's right. That's their father. So they're really from a sports dynasty. Do they own two football teams? That might be true. Yeah, Giants and Steelers. Yeah, big family. Lots of money there. Uh, all right, so anyway, you know what? Here's something very interesting. 2005, the first one, the first Fantastic Four. 2015, the second. The new one will come out in 2025. They're all 10 years apart. I do like that synergy. I think that's really nice. Uh, maybe that's one of the reasons that Kevin Feige is like, we are keeping this movie in 2025 because that's going to look real nice 10 years each time. So uh, we'll see if that works out. It's about a year to date almost exactly after Deadpool and Wolverine. Deadpool and Wolverine comes out uh, July 26th, and Fantastic Four, the new one, comes out July 25th, 2025. So uh, as for these casts, I did not care for the original cast. Uh, I thought it was weak. Uh, as for the second cast, uh, you know, I thought I enjoyed that movie for, for the first part of it, and then it just became awful. Uh, but I kind of feel that movie doesn't get enough credit for the few things that it did get right. Oh, yeah, and Michael B. Jordan, of course, before he went on to be Killmonger and Creed. Uh, this was a tough time for him. I think that it really did affect him with the way he, he was really, really, really... Um, a lot of really horrific comments made about him taking over the role, uh, which was a really ba a bad experience for him. I think you can see that it's, I think even to this day, still has affected him. Uh, so, so, so now we have our new cast. Now let's take a look at the comics. We're going to bring them up for reference. All right, so you have the original comics. So this is a kind of a reference. This is the third issue of um, Fantastic Four, but the first one you can't really see the team very well. Uh, but this is, of course, kind of what they're trying to capture, uh, that original 1960s vibe. Uh, you can see them there in their floating car, which I'm sure they're also going to have. Uh, and then, of course, there's the comics today. And I wonder if the other timeline will be... that. This is, you know, the, the, the split timeline really makes a lot of sense, right? Uh, and don't forget, you know, uh, The Incredibles is very strongly based off of the Fantastic Four, a Disney property, of course, through Pixar. So they're going to have to try and uh, figure out, uh, Jerome, it's not, it's two timelines as in two things that they're, they're dealing with. So, the, you know, it's not all just one straight story. You're going to have it, the, a character or characters reflecting. So I think, to me, that sounds like a good way to be able to have your vintage, but also your modern sensibility. Um, I don't know who the villain is. I haven't heard anything like that. And I don't know. I think I would get in too much trouble even if I did know who it was. <laughs> I, I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to get in trouble. Now, uh, you know, very much uh, you have Violet, very much has invisible, invisible, invisible powers. Uh, there's, you know, Elastigirl, so much, uh, you know, Reed Richards. Uh, and by the way, Brad Bird, the way he came up with using the qualities of those uh, superpowers was incredible. It would be very hard to top the way they used Elastigirl, particularly in The Incredibles 2. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see what they come up with. Uh, I mean, there's other elements to get in there besides just the powers. Uh, I mean, I've never seen Reed Richards be used as well as Elastigirl was 
powers wise. Uh, so that's what they look like. Uh, that's their, uh, let me uh, take out the original comic, but I want to keep up the comics then and now for reference so you can uh, see what the characters look like in the comics. Uh, so, I, I mean, I think they're really cool. I think it'll be interesting to see how they decide to do Sue Storm uh, because when she turns invisible, do you just not see her? That was a real problem for uh, 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 Jessica Alba in the first two movies uh, because she just wasn't on screen. And, you know, that's kind of like even worse than having to wear a mask. You know, your character's what? You, your actor's just doing what? Voiceovers? But maybe they'll do a thing where, you know, you can see her. Sometimes I've seen it in the comics where you can see Sue Storm when she, from her perspective and you see kind of like, like a see-through version of her. And so that, that's how you can, like, but, you know, that's why, no, like, that kind of signals that no one else can see her, but it still allows the character to, to be seen. Uh, not like Emma Frost. Emma Frost turns into a diamond. Uh, you know, Sue Storm is actually supposed to become invisible. Uh, I also really love the way that Sue Storm, uh, they've really done a lot in the comics recently with her creating platforms and discs and certain things with her invisible powers. Now, again, you can't see them. <laughs> so that makes it very difficult. Sometimes in the comics, they cheat. As you can see, she's creating a blue orb, like the bluish hue, like Zay pointed out. They maybe could do that, but that would defeat the purpose in the actual story of the fact that they're supposed to be invisible. You're not supposed to be able to see them. Uh, you know, so, so that's kind of the situation. That's right, it is a little bit like Kamala. Kamala, you know, she went from stealing one fantastic, having a similar Fantastic Four power to another. All right, so let's take a look at the individual uh, casting and I'll share my thoughts on them, all right? I, I think it's a mixed bag. I'm sure it, this is such a nice tease. I think it's very cozy and I feel very good about it. Uh, but I think some of the casting, eh, you know, let's see. All right. So even though the rumor is, is that Sue Storm is the lead, you know, this thing's being written so many, rewritten so many times, she might not be the lead anymore. And I would advise them against doing that. The Fantastic Four is always really a, a team story. Very much they should be paying attention to the full team. So here we go. We've got Pedro Pascal at the Last of Us premiere. Uh, that's, I got a nice picture of him there. And there he is as Reed Richards, sporting a very nice sweater. I love how he zhuzhed, he zhuzhed his sleeves, even in the illustration. He's fashionable even when it's uh, an illustration. I think that's fantastic. Now, I think one has to be a little bit concerned as to whether or not Pedro Pascal will become overexposed. He's got an awful lot of stuff coming up. He's in uh, a lot of big ticket movies. He's in a lot of, uh, you know, smaller films. He has a lot of stuff coming out. Uh, you know, he's got uh, The Mandalorian and Grogu, uh, which they can film simultaneously because he's only doing the voice. So it's a, it's a, it's a little tough, you know. Uh, I think that hopefully, uh, but here he's got gray sideburns <laughs> or white sideburns. He's a totally different person. What are you talking about? Uh, I think that, they're, of course, I wonder if they'll dive right into evil Reed. I think at the very least that it'll be disconnected Reed. Reed, you know, he's so smart and he's got so much on his mind. Remember, because of his elastic powers, he can expand the connections in his brain. And so that's one of the things that makes him smarter. And he can access more of his brain, actually. Uh, so that also, you know, makes him not the best socializer. Uh, which is one of the reasons that Sue is driven into the arms of Namor, who will have plenty of uh, Amor coming up, maybe. If they continue, if they decide to do that love triangle. So uh, he d I will say that Pedro Pascal has a ton of charisma. And I think that even if he does end up taking a secondary position in the, in the story to Sue, St to Sue Storm, I think, Reed, I think Pedro Pascal has so much charisma that, that would, he would balance that out anyway. He would still pop. He would still make the character very much a part of the story. I would also say that Pedro Pascal, he's daddy. He's daddy Pascal. Uh, he's very modern. A lot of younger and diverse audiences love him. Uh, he's extremely supportive of the LGBT community. Uh, he's very uh, engaged on social media. They, he's absolutely adored on TikTok to the, to the degree um, that, uh, that he, they made a whole sketch about it at SNL, which I think was fantastic. Uh, and he certainly, uh, you know, I think uh, he's, he's a very, he, he, I think, let's just say we want to be respectful of Pedro Pascal's personal life you know, and what he chooses to share publicly and officially. But I, I will say that Pedro Pascal, he is uh, very much in step with, I think, a lot of modern 
uh, audiences. And he, you know, he, he's uh, with, with a lot of what people would like to see. So that's all that I want to say about Pedro Pascal uh, in, in that regard. I want to be very respectful of that. But yeah, he's, he's extremely, extremely popular. And he did also, by the way, it just came out on uh, digital, but he, of course, made an LGBT cowboy uh, short with Pedro Amaldivar uh, that uh, is directed by, I mean, that it's a co-stars Ethan Hawke, which is an LGBT cowboy uh, romance. Uh, well, it's like a very dramatic romance. And that's uh, actually available right now on uh, digital that you can go and watch. Uh, and I'm curious to see, he also played a bi, a bi character on Game of Thrones. And I believe, uh, I'm, I'll be interested to see if there's that element to his character in uh, Gladiator 2, because of course it is ancient Rome. So, uh, I, and I think, so I think that's great. I think, you know, also, also there was a lot of LGBT representation in The Last of Us. Uh, and so uh, I think that he does a lot to not only bring diversity, of course, you know, they didn't want an all white cast, you know, that's, the, that's what has been reported. And so that's what Kevin Feige decided to do with casting Pedro Pascal. Oh, that's right, Dallin. And Pedro Pascal's sister is trans. And she was his uh, guest, uh, I believe at the Emmys. Uh, and she got a lot of attention. She looked phenomenal. Uh, and so I think, um, I, I think that's all, uh, I think you can just see that's really part of the, the snapshot of where Pedro Pascal is right now. Uh, and so I think that, that he does a lot to, to, I think, pull a lot of people into, the, into this movie that maybe, maybe would be put off by the 1960s element. So I think that's uh, fantastic. Uh, I, so I think he's very well cast as Reed Richards, to be honest with you. I think he's a fantastic choice. My only concern is that he's a little overexposed at this point. And I would be, you know, but I think that right, I mean, I don't know how people will feel a year and a half from now, but I think right now it's very exciting. I think it's fantastic. I love it. Uh, all right. And I do, I think he look, he's really rocking that sweater. The mustache looks great. They drew a very good Pedro. Uh, all right. Then next up, Vanessa Kirby as Sue Storm. Please remember that I was the first to report this. Very proud of that. One of my best scoops ever. She's finally confirmed. She was very good. She kept the secret for a long time. Everybody was asking her about it. And remember, she was very gracious. And she kept just saying, uh, it would really be great if I could do that role. And we were like, oh, all right, so it was wonderful. I do think her hair looks phenomenal in that illustration. It's very Vanessa Kirby. It's perfect. If you've seen uh, The Crown, you know that she can rock great vintage hairdo and a great sweater. Uh, she looked phenomenal as Princess Margaret in The Crown. Uh, so great to see her finally get the lead in a blockbuster. She, of course, has been in Mission Impossible, but she's not a lead there. There she is at the premiere for Mission Impossible. Uh, I think that her Napoleon scenes were quite risque, surprisingly so. Uh, but, uh, you know, we'll see how it works out. You know, it'll be fine. We'll, we'll make it all work out. Uh, but, I mean, it's fine. I think, obviously, uh, all actresses at this point, you know, especially the other two who were considered for this role, Margot Robbie and Emma Stone, had a, had a similar situation. So it's fine. Uh, I will say that I prefer her casting than Margot Robbie or Emma Stone. And I love Margot Robbie and even Emma Stone. I didn't like Poor Things, but that didn't make me like Emma Stone any less. But I feel this seems fresher. This just feels fresher with Vanessa Kirby. Those other actresses are overexposed. And they've been in really big roles that we've seen them in and associate them with. They, there it would just be Margot Robbie playing Sue Storm or Emma Stone playing Sue Storm. This to me feels like just it's Sue Storm. You know, that's something that the Pedro Pascal casting has to battle a little bit. It is Pedro Pascal who just happens to be playing, uh, you know, Reed Richards at this point. But I think that, you know, this is one of those roles. You know, Chris Hemsworth is Thor, right? Robert Downey Jr. is uh, Tony Stark. Even Chris Evans is Steve Rogers. Uh, and I think to some degree, Elizabeth Olsen, whether she likes it or not, is Wanda, right? These things are all, you know, very much, this, they, they own that character. And I think this is an opportunity for Vanessa Kirby to own Sue Storm. And I'm very excited about that. As I said, the character has been the lead in previous drafts. I hope that Marvel moves away from that because I just don't think it's serving them well. There's no, that doesn't mean that she can't have a huge role and, and make everybody just absolutely fall in love with the character. Um, you know, you guys are pointing out like Tom Hiddleston is Loki, Elizabeth Olsen is, uh, is Wanda, Sebastian Stan is Bucky. These, char these actors had even smaller roles and they were phenomenal and they won over the hearts of everybody. So 
I will be curious to see her chemistry with Pedro, but I think one of the great things about Pedro Pascal is that he has charisma with absolutely everyone. <laughs> Across all genders, all spectrums, Pedro Pascal has charisma. He has charisma probably with Herbie. You know, every, everybody gets along with uh, Pedro Pascal, so I think it'll be just fine. Uh, I think that'll be great. I'm very excited to see that. Uh, all right, then this is the casting I don't, I don't, I don't like this next two castings, I'm afraid. So Joseph Quinn as Johnny Storm. Uh, Joseph Quinn, of course, is from Stranger Things. Uh, he played Eddie. Uh, he looks very different without the big hair. Uh, in fact, when he was on Stranger Things, a lot of people said, oh, hey, he looks so much like Robert Downey Jr. And I can see that. Um, he's also, uh, of course, in Gladiator 2 with Pedro Pascal. Uh, interestingly, and then he's also in A Quiet Place too, and he was featured in the a recent trailer that dropped right before the Super Bowl, and I thought he looked pretty good there, actually, but I got to tell you, he's simply not Johnny. He might be a one, he'd be, and I, I think he's a great actor. I think he's very charismatic. I think he's just great. I think, and I'm sure he'll do a wonderful job in the role, but I don't think he's going to be Johnny Storm. Uh, now, you might be like, why, Grace? Why wouldn't he be Johnny Storm? Well, the problem is, is that Johnny Storm is supposed to look like a male model. Now, that's the whole point of Johnny Storm. Johnny Storm, that's why a lot of us were like, what about Zac Efron, right? Or Austin Butler, we, or Jacob Elordi. Right? That's right, Alexander. A lot of us felt Austin Butler, Austin Butler would have been perfect. So would Jacob Elordi, actually. I would have preferred Jacob Elordi, even though Jacob Elordi is not a great actor. I don't care. All he's got to do is say, flame on and uh, flirt with ladies. And Jacob Elordi can do that. I mean, that's really what, uh, you know, and also here's the other problem. Um, Johnny Storm is extremely good friends with Peter Parker. And I feel that there's a very strong similarity between these two actors. Uh, they're also even both British, in fact. Uh, so I think it's going to be weird. We all want our Spider-Man hanging out with human torch scenes, but they're going to seem like brothers you know, instead of, you know, they're supposed, to, Peter Parker is supposed to be the everyman, and that's one of the fun things about their relationship, that he's friends with this guy who's like this really vain, stuck-up male model. Like, like, yeah, like, that's right, Tillman. You know, Johnny Storm is a rock star. You know, he's the, he, of the Fantastic Four, he's the one who embraces their celebrity all the time. So, uh, you know, not a, not a, not a, not a great choice. <laughs> I gotta tell you. I, I'm sorry to say. Uh, I think it's interesting how they styled Johnny. Let's take a closer look at this, all right? He and Ben Grimm, you'll see, have the same jackets on. That's like a 1960s kind of jacket. Uh, it's cute. Uh, he's got his pants rolled up like 1960s styles. Uh, they gave him, like, they combed his hair a little bit 1960s. I mean, it's fine, but it's it's not. I'm Paul, I'm glad you agree, but uh, I, I just don't think he's he's Johnny. Maybe they feel he's like, 1960s Johnny? Oops, sorry, I didn't silence my phone. Maybe they feel he's 1960s Johnny? But even the 1960s, I don't think he would. He, I mean, I was hoping they were going to replace him at the last minute. As you've heard me say, I was like, maybe they're taking forever to announce this cast because they want to get somebody else. But they didn't. So, I mean, again, I might like the character. Uh, that, that, that's the Back to the Future sound. You know, like, doo-doo-doo. That's my, uh, my text ringtone. So, uh, yeah, I mean, again, nothing against the actor. I think he's fine. Uh, we'll do polls while I do the, um, well, I, I don't want to interrupt my flow, but while we do the q and uh, we'll do the polls. Uh, so, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, we'll see. We'll see how he looks when we see him in live action, but I'm not even feeling him in the illustration. Then, finally, I, uh, Yvonne Moss uh, Bacharach, or, uh, 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 or Barack, right, um, as Ben Grimm, a.k.a the thing. I've put him there when he won his Emmy, standing next to Jeremy Allen White, because I think most, who here knows who Yvonne Moss uh, 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 Barack is? He, of course, was in The Punisher. He was also on The Punisher Show. Danny, I didn't choose the most boring picture of him, because look, here's a picture of him in the bear. Oh, there he is. There's his personality. He plays cousin, of course, on the bear. That's a photo from the episode called Forks. Uh, it's one of the best episodes of television you'll ever see. Uh, he's phenomenal on this show, and that's what's kind of made him, a, gave him at least a cult following. So, yeah, some of, I think some of you know him. Not, a lot of you don't, you know? Like, I think people know, if you, if you know who he is, 
you absolutely adore him. But if you don't know him, you're like, who's that guy? So uh, there he is. He's going to be playing, uh, I, I, obviously, I guess, with motion capture, you know, kind of the way they animate uh, the Hulk. But I, I don't know about this casting. I, let me just say, well, I mean, obviously, he's a, he's a Jewish actor. They wanted a Jewish actor because Ben Grimm is a Jewish character. Uh, and I think that Ebon is extremely good at comedy and drama. If you've watched him on The Bear, oh, yeah, that's right. He was also on Andor, Danny. If you've watched him on The Bear, you can see how funny he is and also that he's so good at those really dramatic, heartfelt moments. But my problem is, is that this is a waste of him as an actor. I feel there are so many other exciting roles that he could have played. Uh, you know, I would have rather it have been Seth Rogen, to be honest with you. I, I guess Seth Rogen is like a little bit obvious, but he's so obvious that you're okay if you don't see him. Like the fact that we're not gonna get to see him on camera you know, like at least with the Hulk, the, the characters de-Hulk and you see them in their human form. You're never going to see him as, except for his origin, you know, if they do that. But you're never going to, I mean, maybe the most you'll see is just that picture of him as an astronaut. That to me is very frustrating. I think he's just such a phenomenal actor and he surely will be able to get other things, but this is going to be his comic book role and this is certainly his role in the MCU. And I, I'm just... Um, I don't feel it's a good use of him because he, he's just so he's just so fantastic. Uh, oh well, all right. So let me bring up uh, that's my thoughts on this. Let me bring up the main picture, and we can do uh, Q and A, and we can do polls while we do it. All right, there it is. Let me make it a little bigger. And there's their logo. Like, see, for instance, that logo doesn't match. This logo doesn't match that picture. So there, that's another reason why it makes sense to have like uh, a disjoint in the storytelling. So you can do both of these. You can have the 1960s, and then you can also have something that's a little bit more modern for today's audiences. I'm excited to see what the other, if they have other suits, I'm excited to see what they might look like. Uh, I have to say, putting them in sweaters is, is a move, and I'm feeling it. I love the sweaters. Maybe they could sell those sweaters. I would, uh, I mean, every, a, a good sweater can really do a lot for anybody. Sweaters are very complimentary. People don't like sweaters, but they're extremely complimentary to figures. Uh, I don't know about those jackets that they're wearing, though. Uh, all right, so the first thing will be, let's do a poll. Uh, we'll start off with Pedro. What do you think of Pedro Pascal as Reed Richards? We'll do perfect casting. Uh... I just want more Pedro. Need to see it. And then not my Reed Richards. Okay. Does anybody have any so questions and comments? Zach Abbey says, I was hoping Ross Lynch for Johnny Storm because he's been great against Tom Holland's he'd be great against Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Isn't is Ross Lynch from Sabrina? I'm not clicking with that name off the top of my head, but if he's from Sabrina, I feel he might be a little too TV. I mean, obviously, uh, Joseph Quinn is from Stranger Things, but that's, I think, a bigger, a bigger port, a bigger brand. I have not heard who's playing Doctor Doom. I don't even know if Doctor Doom's in this movie, to be honest with you. But I saw Ben Mendelsohn uh, putting his hat in the ring for Doom the other day, and I was like, yes, please. He was wasted as a scroll. I don't know if Vanessa Kirby will have a British or an American accent, but I, I don't see Pedro Pascal having a British accent. I mean, I don't know. Maybe the Storm family will be British. I know that the MCU is tired of New York as a setting. So maybe, the, maybe I could see that actually. You know, I'm sure that Ebon's going to lean heavily into his cousin accent and do like the, the, like the really heavy urban accent for Ben Grimm. I think Pedro Pascal will sound like Pedro Pascal, which is exactly what everybody wants. And I think, you know, I, I think making the storms British isn't a bad idea. I think it's a little, it's refreshing. It's a little bit different. Let's see here. Sham says, I'd rather Seth Rogen take over for fight. Seth Rogen is really on fire with the things that he's producing. I would agree with that. All right, let me close this poll and then I'll look at the next one. Okay, hold on. I think Ross Lich was on the Disney Channel and Sabrina, right? 
All right, so 40% of you need to see it. That's surprising that so many of you need to see it. Oh, wow, I'm surprised at that reaction. Uh, but right behind it, 29% is perfect casting. 15% just want more Pedro. And then only 14%, thankfully, just are like, no. But 40 is surprising. I'm surprised how many of you um, need to see it. Uh-oh. All right, let's look at the next one. Marvel's in a weird space right now. Okay. I hope Matt Shankman can do something that's cinematic enough. Uh, Kirby as Sue Storm. Perfect casting. Um, need to see, need to see more. Would have preferred other actress. And then not my Sue Storm. So when I say would have preferred other actress, it means like you would have preferred for them to go with uh, Margot Robbie or Emma Stone. That's right, Derek. Third try on the Fantastic Four. I don't know why everybody loves the Fantastic Four so much. Is everybody here a big Fantastic Four fan? I mean, I certainly intellectually respect them, but I'm, it's not like the X-Men or, I'm, or I'm even, I think, like Spider-Man. I mean, with the Fantastic Four, I'm like, wow, people, people sh for some reason sure do care a lot about the Fantastic Four. Oh, look, Ivan's a super fan. That's great. So, so, so super extrovert. Resident Justice. Okay, that's cool. We'll do a poll. We'll do a poll at the end. Yeah, that's right, because it's a little bit hard to tell. All right, so hold on. I'm just letting the Vanessa Kirby poll end. Oh, that went fast. Okay. Oh, by the way, anyone can vote in a poll. You don't have to be a member to vote in a poll. I guess I should have said that earlier. I'm sorry. 64% uh, perfect casting for Vanessa Kirby. Oh, that's great. That's interesting that you guys feel better about Vanessa than you do Pedro. 27% of you need to see more. 6% only would have, would have preferred another actress, and only 1% say, not my Sue Storm. Oh, that's very excellent. That's very exciting. That's excellent for Vanessa Kirby. Uh, most of you, overwhelmingly, are at least leaning towards positive. That's great. Uh, all right, next up, Joseph Quinn. We'll do the polls fast, because it's hard for me to read. What do you think of Joseph Quinn as... Johnny Storm. Perfect casting. Horrible casting. <laughs> and then need to see it. Need to see more. Okay. You can vote on that. Finn says, I hope they put in the effort to make Pascal look as much like Reed as possible. If that means shaving off his stash, then so be it. No, he's going to rock the stash. I mean, he's got the white sideburns. What else does he need? I think he's going to have the stash. I think that's his look. I want him to have the stash. Joe says, Sue could be the lead, but the movie really needs to focus on story and character above all else. Uh, yeah, but I really want to see a lot of powers. Andrew says, I don't mind Pedro, but I need him to be clean shaven and have fresh haircut. Oh, really? Is that really that important to you? I think they're going to try and make him look like as much like Pedro Pascal as possible and just give him the white sideburns. That's right, Haunted Autumn. He's Stash Daddy. He's got to have the stash. Hey, Javier. Uh, GM, I agree that uh, Austin Butler and Vanessa Kirby would have matched perfectly. All right, let me close this voting. Then we go. Two more votes to go. All right, so 59% of you need to see more. That's very kind of you that most of you are trying to keep an open mind. 21% say it's horrible casting, and 18% say perfect casting. Uh, so that's not bad. That's not bad. I mean, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. You know, some of you are mentioning Adam Driver. Adam Driver wouldn't have worked out in this kind of an illustration, by the way. I don't think it would have worked. Um, I think that I like, I'm happy with Pedro Pascal in this role. And I do agree that it would be tough to have them all be uh, Caucasian in terms of trying to bring in a big demographic, especially for the Fantastic Four. Uh, all right, so let's see here. What do you think of Ebon, MB, as Ben Grimm? Perfect casting. Need to see more. Waste of Ebon, and then not my Ben Grimm. Again, anyone can vote in a poll. 
You do not have to be a member to vote in a poll. Uh, that's funny, Wandering Seth. I, too, am just waiting for the X-Men. Andrew says, it reminds me of how George Lucas said he didn't want to cast A-list actors for Star Wars because he felt they would overshadow the character. That's what Pedro does for me. Love Vanessa Kirby. Yeah, that's true. I think that's always something you have to be worried about. But I think that they want, they got to make sure people go and see this. And this is, a, this, I think this is Pedro Pascal's first big movie gig, actually. I mean, he's going to have a supporting role in Gladiator 2, but this is his first lead in a movie. And it ain't shabby. It ain't too shabby for his first big thing. Good for him. Oh, you guys voted fast on this. And then we'll do one more about Fantastic Four fans. Okay, so here... All right. Uh, Nova Star, I can see you love the Invisible Woman, and I'm glad you're so happy. That's important. 51% uh, of you need to see more of Ebon in the role. 31% think it's perfect casting. 12% say we, a, a waste of Ebon. And then for only 4% say not my Ben Grimm. Okay, so this is good. I think for the most part, nobody hates any of this, right? So even Joseph, Qu uh, Joseph Quinn, you guys don't hate it. You guys are open to seeing what he delivers. And so the last poll I'm going to do is, are you a fan of the Fantastic Four? So super fan, I enjoy their stories. <laughs> Don't care for them. Oh, oh no, we'll do, meh. Take them or leave them. And then not a fan. Okay, again, anyone can vote in a poll who's watching. Anybody can vote in a poll. Melody T, you think they're the best team besides the Guardians of the Galaxy? I've never seen that dynamic in the comics, but I never appreciated Captain America until I saw him in live action. So I'm open for having, uh, I'm open for being convinced. And Shahar, I would agree they're not X-Men or Spider-Man level for sure. Hey, Corinne Deep, welcome back. Ivan Sarmiento says, thoughts on this releasing versus uh, Superman? It's funny because they're both very like wholesome characters, uh, you know, um, and very old school comics. Uh, I think this is coming out a little bit before. Oh no, like a little bit. Uh, isn't July twenty fifth? Oh yeah, it's like July eleventh. I think is Superman. Uh, I haven't seen anything from Superman, so it's impossible to be able to tell. Hopefully, it'll just be a great month for movies. Uh, I feel, you know, I feel I'm still hopeful that James Gunn could do it. He's so excited. I feel hopefully that'll translate. And I like Guardians of the Galaxy 3 so much. Jesse the Goodwitch says, Did the Fantastic Four have a good female villain? Because if they do, I say they need to get in Sarah Paulson. That's right, she and Pedro, they are mother and father. Uh, let's see here. Brett Crandall says, Grace, I had a super chat wondering if Reed could be portrayed as autistic to explain his social tendencies. I don't really know if I want to put that on Pedro Pascal. You know, I don't know if this is the place to do that effectively. Because uh, he's going to be so busy smoldering and being uh, everyone's daddy. Uh, I really don't know if you could, uh, I think it would be weird that you then made him everyone's like autistic daddy. Uh, Man on the Moon React says, which July 2025 couple will people like more, Lois and Clark or Reed and Sue? Oh, that's easy. Hands down, Reed and Sue. This is one sexy couple. I'll give this show, I'll give this casting that. This is a sexy couple. With all due respect, I mean, James Gunn did not go for sex appeal. James Gunn went for comics accurate and like gumption and everyone being like, oh, that's fun, you know? Um, but I think that it doesn't have the smolder of Vanessa Kirby and Pedro Pascal. I mean, that's why, thank goodness, Tina Huerta is there because he also can match them in smolder. Maybe he, if anyone has more smolder than them, it's Tina Huerta, shirtless and dripping wet. Decked in all, out in all his jewels. Uh, so are you a fan of the Fantastic Four? 45% say they enjoy the stories. Uh, so that's good. You're a moderate fan. 31% are like me. Take them or leave them. Only 16% are super fans. So that's why I think they went with the Pedro Pascal casting. Uh, to tap in to his casting in Mandalorian. You know, his fandom there and in The Last of Us. And then only 6% don't like them. So that's, that's promising. Uh, da, 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 da. Shamar, I don't know why you keep asking about 
whether or not Johnny Storm will be LGBT. I've never heard of that. He's never been that in the comics, I don't believe. That's Iceman, who has been retconned into an LGBT character, although some would argue, some say they see that it was always there. Um, but it's not Johnny Storm. He's, a, he's very much a ladies' man. Uh, Karen Deep says, was Paul Mes Mescal ever considered for Johnny? I, that was the rumor. I believe that he was. It's interesting they want the same type of person because Joseph Quinn has a very similar look. Twinkle says, is Pedro maybe to make too likable to play Reed? No, Twinkle, I think that's what's good. I think you want him to be likable to counteract some of maybe Reed's actions. You know, a villain that you love to, you know, because Reed has villainous, villainous tendencies. Like there's a whole council of Reeds, just like there's a council of Kangs. There's a whole bunch of... Um, uh, reads that often work together. And so that will be fun for Pedro Pascal to hopefully eventually play. And, you know, they're not always very nice. Let's see here. Is Vanessa Kirby uh, mommy? They really are daddy and mommy because, of course, they end up having uh, Franklin Richards and Valeria Richards. You know, the Fantastic Four very much down the line become a family with kids. Again, it's like the Incredibles. So they really will be daddy and mommy. Logo, John Thrasher says, my missed super chat. The logo and image give WandaVision vibes. Any chance Wanda Agatha could play into this? I, don't th I think that's too confusing. Uh, again, as I said, I heard this was a different universe in the multiverse. Um, and I just don't think, you know, this is, you know, the Fantastic Four are in the science section of the uh, MCU, along with Black Panther and Iron Man and all that stuff. Jake says, I love that this is taking place in the 1960s. I wonder if the end will be similar to the uh, 2011 Captain America film. I don't think that would be, I hope, I think that only part of it would take place in this. I think that's why I told you again that it's going to be two kind of spaces to work in. And I think one will be, I, I suspect, I can't confirm what the stories are, but I suspect one might be more modern. Nova Star, there was an Invisible Woman spy comic, so I see where you're coming from, where she was an agent. Elise, do you mean the Reeds are deadbeat dads? Yes, Reed is not a great father. Cool Hive says, I just worry about the body horror problem. I don't think there will be any body horror. I think they're going to go uh, for... Oh, I froze. It's better now, right? Too many people on the stream. I love it. Okay. All right. Good. Good. Okay. All right. Uh, I, be I better get going, actually. It's Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Thank you for going over this with me. I had a fantastic time. Uh, thank you so much, uh, and I will see you tomorrow for another live stream, and I hope that you guys have a wonderful Valentine's Day, and I had a great time going over this cast with you. I am very, I think this is a nice start uh, for this film. All right, everybody, bye!